As the SR-71 Blackbird took its final bow, many believed aerial reconnaissance had peaked, with nothing left to match its speed and mystique. It looks like it's hard spaceship, hard airplane. And when you see it in the air, it's a piece of artwork. But few knew what was brewing. The SR-72, Lockheed Martin's hypersonic next-gen stealth drone, an airborne specter and a nightmare for any defense system it encounters. What secrets lie within this cutting-edge marvel, and can it really surpass its legendary predecessor? Ask anyone to name the most iconic U.S. spy plane, and the SR-71 Blackbird is likely to be on everyone's lips. But this masterpiece of stealth had its roots in a high-stakes incident from the 1960s, when a daring American pilot, Gary Powers, was shot down while flying a U-2 Dragon Lady over Soviet territory. That incident was a wake-up call. The U.S. realized the era of simple reconnaissance was over as advancing radar and missile technology left the Dragon Lady vulnerable. America needed an aircraft faster, higher flying, and nearly invisible. The answer? A mysterious new project with the CIA's blessing. In 1957, the CIA tasked Lockheed with an ambitious mission. Create a spy plane that would make the U-2 look like ancient history. They called it Archangel, inspired by an earlier program, and put the project in the hands of Kelly Johnson and his brilliant Skunk Works team in California. The mission was as straightforward as it was daunting. Build a plane that could fly faster, reach new altitudes, and dodge radar detection. After a meeting with the CIA in 1959, Lockheed reduced the plane's radar profile by a staggering 90%, ushering in an entirely new breed of spy aircraft. Out of this evolution came the A-12, the first true stealth reconnaissance aircraft. Designed with the utmost secrecy, Archangel was whittled down to just A-12, a code name that minimized foreign attention and hinted at the future of stealth. Yet even as it neared completion, radar technology overseas had already caught up and satellite reconnaissance began to prove its strategic worth. Although the A-12 would go on to conduct incredible missions over North Korea and Vietnam, its role was already slipping away as the world's intelligence game evolved. Then before the A-12 even retired, the SR-71 Blackbird was already poised to steal its spotlight. The SR-71 wasn't just an improved A-12, it was a more versatile, groundbreaking marvel in its own right. In 1967, during a test along the Mississippi, both planes were put to a head-to-head -head trial with the SR-71 gathering more detailed intelligence than the A-12 could manage, thanks to its dual camera and signal collecting abilities. While the A-12 was limited to special ops, the SR-71 was built for sustained daily missions. It was faster, could carry more fuel, and with its two-seat cockpit, was prepared for the challenges ahead. After its official debut in 1966, the SR-71 didn't just rewrite the rulebook, it shattered it. With its cruising speed at Mach 3.3, it set records for the fastest flight from New York to London and reached heights no other jet has matched. When the Blackbird began its daring recon missions over North Vietnam and Laos in 1968, it was unlike anything the world had seen. For nearly two years, it averaged one mission each week, then ramped up to two by 1970. By 1972, these missions reached a relentless pace, one every day. Such intensity didn't come without a response. During the Vietnam War alone, the North Vietnamese launched over 800 air defense missiles in the SR-71's direction, but not one found its mark. Over the Blackbird's entire career, more than 4,000 missiles would be fired at it, all of them evaded. This jet could quite literally outrun missiles, a feat that left adversaries helpless and Blackbird pilots with more than a few tales to tell. But by 1989, the Blackbird's days were numbered, not because it wasn't still effective, but because it was deemed too expensive to maintain. Congress proposed its retirement, and many Blackbird fans were outraged, convinced that high-ranking detractors, those with little understanding of aerial reconnaissance, were to blame. Some even claimed they inflated costs, suggesting the plane was costing $400-$700 million a year in $85,000 per hour of flight. Ultimately, NASA became the last operator of two airworthy SR-71s, with the rest of the fleet retired to museums. With the Blackbird's departure, there was nothing on the horizon that could truly take its place. Sure, the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II were incredible fighters from Lockheed Martin, but they served different missions. The skies were missing something uniquely Blackbird, then in 2013, Lockheed Martin made a stunning announcement. They were working on an SR-71 successor. Dubbed the SR-72 or the Son of Blackbird, this new plane promised to match the SR-71 in size and soar to hypersonic speeds up to Mach 6. Aviation fans and media went wild, 
This was a speed only the experimental North American X-15 had ever achieved. But while many imagined a piloted Blackbird reborn, Lockheed had something even more futuristic in mind, a hypersonic unmanned reconnaissance platform. The Skunk Works engineers had an almost impossible task. They needed to create an engine capable of flying not just at supersonic, but hypersonic speeds. This wasn't just about pushing limits. This engine would have to perform across three distinct flight modes, subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic, and do so with flawless transitions. By 2013, Skunk Works and Aerojet Rocketdyne had already been at it for seven intense years, experimenting and pushing boundaries to merge a traditional turbine with a hypersonic ramjet engine known as a scramjet. The goal? To power a drone that could go from a dead stop to the mind-bending speeds of Mach 6 and beyond. The foundation of this revolutionary engine began with parts already proven in high-performance fighters. They started with components from the Pratt and Whitney F-100 and GE F-110 engines, both turbofan engines built to go fast, but only up to supersonic speeds. As this new engine hit Mach 3, a secret weapon kicked in, a dual-mode ramjet designed to harness supersonic airflow using it as the fuel that would carry the drone into hypersonic territory. The magic of this design lies in a sophisticated air intake that creates shockwaves, compressing the air in just the right way for Mach 6 speeds, letting this new drone not only rival the Blackbird, but leave it behind. Yet speed alone isn't enough. The extreme temperatures at Mach 6 could turn any ordinary aircraft into a molten mess. This is the next major hurdle for the Skunk Works team. Creating a body that can withstand temperatures reaching 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, they're diving deep into composites, high-performance carbon, ceramic, and metal blends, specifically for these intense conditions. To put it into perspective, steel begins to melt at 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, but the SR-72 will need materials that can hold their own well beyond that threshold, avoiding catastrophic failures even at hypersonic speeds. America has quietly led the charge in hypersonic research driven by NASA's X-43 and Boeing's X-51 programs. But it had set aside these programs for decades as focus shifted to new threats. Then in 2017, Skunk Works CEO Rob Weiss revealed a bombshell. Hypersonic propulsion tests for the SR-72 were complete, and they were entering the prototype phase. This new model, a flight research vehicle, or FRV, would be about 60 feet long, roughly the size of an F-22 Raptor, and equipped to sustain Mach 6 for several minutes. Then just a year later, Jack O'Banion, Lockheed's vice president, hinted at a game-changing advancement. Thanks to 3D printing, they'd achieved a level of precision that would have been unthinkable just a decade earlier, even embedding cooling systems directly within the engine. In March 2018, the world got a wake-up call as the Russian president officially unveiled the X-47 Mil-2 Kinjal, a hypersonic missile that threw down the gauntlet and sparked an unofficial hypersonic arms race. Soon after, mentions of Lockheed Martin's SR-72 vanished from public view, almost as if the project had gone silent. But insiders and Air Force reps have hinted that the SR-72 could return in a new form, not just as a reconnaissance marvel, but as a launch platform for hypersonic missiles. Now, launching a hypersonic missile mid-flight isn't just difficult, it's a brutal engineering challenge pushing materials to withstand incredible pressure and heat. Yet Lockheed's no stranger to this problem. It already proved a Mach 3 missile launch was possible decades ago with its YF-12 interceptors. While the SR-72 appeared to slip into the shadows, something strange happened in 2021. A video from the U.S. Air Force's training division showed a sleek single-engine plane that looked strikingly similar to those early SR-72 renderings. And the next year, moviegoers got a tantalizing glimpse of the SR-72's potential in Top Gun. Maverick with a fictional jet called Dark Star, a hypersonic beast credited to Skunk Works. It's safe to say the engineers made it look close to real, maybe a bit too real. Now the clock is ticking. Recent interviews suggest the SR-72's prototype could take its first flight as early as 2025, with full service expected by 2030. But as the Air Force gears up for the 6th Gen NGAD fighter in the early 2030s and prepares for the arrival of the new B-21 Raider bomber and a wave of collaborative combat drones, one question looms. Can the budget handle this high-stakes lineup? What's your take? 
Will the SR-72 finally step out of the shadows and claim its place in the skies by the 2030s? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more deep dives like this.